Hey everybody, this is Nori from Smart Service, and today we're going to be taking a look at the latest and greatest features in version 103. Let's go ahead and see what we got in store. Alright everybody, so version 103 of Smart Service is going to be all about processing payments, whether that's in the office or in the field. Uh, we've teamed up with a company called CardPoint uh, to integrate some merchant services into Smart Service. Uh, these new features here are going to help you guys with processing credit cards. Uh, if you need to run any refunds on credit cards, we can handle that through the software. Uh, you can do both of these things through iFleet and through the office, so either one will work out. Uh, you can also save credit card information in this program, and we will encrypt that information for you so everything's nice and secure, which is what you all want. Uh, but I know this is a long-awaited feature for everybody. It's something that everyone's definitely excited to get started with. Uh, there are some things you got to do to get this sign up. So after you contact us here, you're going to be taken over to this form. And on this form here, you'll want your business owner to fill this information out. Uh, one, they have to fill this out. Secondly, it's mostly information that only they will have access to. So if I just scroll through the list here, you guys can take a look at some of the things that, you know, whoever calls, uh, whoever's owning the business is going to know. But once this application is filled out, you'll be ready to go with CardPoint. For those of you who are interested in these new features, uh, definitely feel free to give us a call. That should be your next step here. Uh, and our phone number, once again, is 888-518-0818. But without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at what these features look like on a day-to-day -day basis. All right, everybody, so let's go ahead and take a look at the features that are available in Smart Service to you guys back in the office. Uh, if we take a look at this job that I have on the screen here, we got a new option in the screen, uh, and that's going to be at the very end, called Payments. And essentially, that tab is going to help you guys collect payment for the services that are on the job. So we can click on the Payments section. We'll see any uh, transactions that we've run previously to this. Uh, this is a brand new job though. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and run our first transaction for the job. All I need to do here is click on the Add Payment option, which will bring up this form here. And we want to go ahead and fill out this information with the customer's information. Uh, what it's going to do is it's going to take a look at the job and the amount due on the job so far. Uh, and it's going to put that into our amount box. You can change that amount to a different amount if they're going to pay something else today. Uh, but by default, we'll assume that they're going to be paying for the job that we're on currently. Uh, after that, we want to go ahead and select the payment method. You'll see we have a couple different options stored up in there for the payment method. I'm going to go ahead and take a visa. Uh, you also want to say what kind of payment type is this. So I'm going to assume credit card uh, for this one here. Uh, but you could take other kinds of payments. We also have a saved payments option. I'll be getting to that one here in just a moment. Uh, but generally, your options are going to be any credit card or debit card will go as a credit card here. Uh, you have any checks. so any electronic checks or paper checks that you receive. And then other payments, generally that's going to be used for like a cash, uh, gift card, something like that. Uh, so you have the option of selecting that other option there. Uh, since we've chosen the payment method of Visa though, we'll also have a card type we need to select. Uh, so we can go ahead and select a Visa here. We want to go ahead and put in the card number uh, that the individual is giving us. Uh, so this is something I'll go ahead and type in now for us. And then we'll go ahead and include the person's name on their card the expiration month and the expiration year. You'll need the security code from the back of the person's card. And then the address that we're planning to bill this card to. So whatever the card says it has as the billing address. So we get that information in here. Uh, at this point, uh, we want to go ahead and decide whether or not we want to save this payment method. Uh, that is an option that's at the bottom of the screen there. Uh, that will allow this credit card number to be encrypted within the system, so you won't be able to see the number next time, but you'll be able to reference, uh, as it shows up here, the uh, first two digits and the last four digits of that card number. Uh, it'll be an option when you select the saved payments part of the payment type there. It'll come with any numbers we've saved on file. So you can ask them if they'd like to save this number on file. If they say yes, we can go ahead and check this box down here at the bottom for save payment method. And on the note of encryption, if you guys decide not to save the payment method on file, that's great too. The number will still be encrypted, it just won't be saved anywhere. So it's a way of taking a one-time secure payment. Uh, and then we have a couple options for how to proceed. Uh, we could just save this uh, by hitting save at the top right, and that's just going to hold on to this information until we're ready to process it. If I'd like to go ahead and attempt to process this payment on this card right now, I can go ahead and hit the process payment option on the right. When I do that, if the card is declined or there are insufficient funds, you will receive a prompt telling you so. Uh, otherwise, we'll see this prompt here for when the card has been uh, accepted. So we'll see this payment process successfully. 
upon clicking OK of this window, it's going to add that payment as a pending payment to the job. Now, what that means for you here is that this payment hasn't yet been posted to QuickBooks. We have the option here of double clicking on the payment to open it and make any adjustments that we need to. We can also hit the post payment button to the right of the payment. And if we click on that, that's what's going to be what sends this payment over to QuickBooks so it starts showing up in your accounting software. Uh, with that being said, let's say maybe you forget to do that. Uh, we go ahead and complete the job. Well, Smart Service will recognize the payment on here and help you post that payment at the time that you post the invoice over to QuickBooks as well. But if I go ahead and click post payment here, see that payment disappears from the screen. And if I go over to visit QuickBooks, we'll be able to see that payment record down here at the bottom. So that payment's going to wait in there until I have an invoice uh, that we have to apply to that. So I'm ready to go ahead and post over that service. That might be immediately. Maybe they paid in advance. Uh, you know, that might be a little bit from now. Uh, we have the option. It's in here already. Another great option I'd like to go over with you here is back in Smart Service. If, let's say, something happens, we need to refund that payment, what you have the option of doing is unchecking this view only pending payments. You'll be able to see the payments that we've already processed through here. Uh, we can double click on one of these to open them up. Uh, and within this payment option here, you'll have the option to either void or refund that payment. Uh, so we could choose to refund that payment if we need. It'll ask us to choose an item from QuickBooks. So we can choose our item and make sure that the amount matches what you should automatically. Uh, if we do this and we go ahead and hit refund, it's going to go ahead and process our refund in QuickBooks. We'll get our refund processed successfully. I can go ahead and hit OK on this prompt to close out that window. Both of those transactions are now saved in there. And if I go and visit QuickBooks, what we're going to see now is that we have a credit card refund posted in there for us. So at the same time that you're doing these things in Smart Service, we're going to be doing them in QuickBooks for you in the background. Uh, we can create all kinds of records in QuickBooks, as you guys well know. Uh, so not only now can we create invoices, but we can also create payments, credit card refund, and credit memos, depending on what the situation calls for. So now that we're in iFleet, we can go ahead and take a look at the uh, payment options that are available out in the field. Uh, so if we go in here and we tap Process Payment, we'll see we have a similar window to what we saw in Smart Service. Uh, the amount will try to match for you uh, based off of what the total of the job is. Uh, so we can go ahead and write that in. We, of course, can choose what kind of payment method we're going to be taking. So I'll go ahead and once again select a Visa. Uh, we'll be able to put in the name of the card, so let's go ahead and do that. We'll be able to input the card number as well, and of course the expiration date. And of course the address will default from the job for us. Uh, so you might need to change that to you know something else if it's going to be a different card, if it's not uh, maybe the person or the, the building that we usually do the service at. Of course, once again, we have the option to save and therefore encrypt the payment method, so we can go ahead and select that option if we'd like. And we can hit Submit at the top right-hand corner when we've got all of our information entered. Once we've done that, we'll get our payment process successfully messaged here. We can go ahead and hit OK there. I can also see in the Job Items section of my job now uh, that we have a payment total below the total for the job, which results in our $0 amount due on the job. Another great thing about this I'd like to show you, and this works with the default work order that's built into iFleet. If I go ahead and finalize my job and head over to that section of iFleet here, we'll be able to see that on the new work order that we have, we now also have a payment total option. So the same things that you were seeing back in Smart Service and back in the internal part of iFleet, uh, the customer can now see as well. So they can see the total of their job, the sales tax due, the payment total that they made, and the remaining balance that they owe, which in this case will be zero because we've taken a payment in the field. Okay, everybody, so that'll wrap it up for version 103 of Smart Service. If you would like more information on this update, go ahead and visit us at smartservice.com forward slash updates for more information, and we'll see you next time.